welcome to the channel thank you everybody for tuning in on today's video i will be doing the full review on the forzo enduro timer now i unboxed this watch a little over a week ago uh, and it was me in fact who reached out to forzo uh, because i saw the post on instagram and it was a watch that really did stand out to me and i wanted to get it into review now in the unboxing i covered the specifications and dimensions so i won't be covering those in this video however i'll leave uh, the description and details on text on screen forzo is a uk based micro brand and their whole brand identity is around the good old British motorsport days. Therefore, the whole motorsport theme uh, plays a heavy influence on the watches, the designs, the colors that you see of the watches it is consistently present throughout all the packaging and the branding. You know, you've got the logo, uh, you've got the tiger, the key ring, everything does shout motorsport. It gives you a clear link between the watch and the whole brand identity, which is one of the things which I absolutely love. In comparison to homage watches and aliexpress this is where there's a massive difference and it's partly the reason why people don't consider homage watches or the watches on aliexpress because this is what this channel predominantly reviews uh, they don't consider them to be micro brands this is what a micro brand should look like consistency in their branding and in their identity for example san martin still doesn't have their branding tied down uh, it still is a little bit all over the place so that is one of the things which i admire about this brand and that is the bonus of micro brands after the unboxing a few people made a really valid point and it was around the price now like most people including myself i do agree that the price is a bit steep it is 400 pounds which is around 520 odd dollars but you can get it on sale from the various distributors uh, like Gekota watches and they can do it for around 320 pound on sale so if you do want to buy this watch you know depending on the outcome of this review and how you feel afterwards you do really want to wait for the discounted price because i do think that 400 pound is a bit much because it does come back to it being a Seiko VK63 movement. So I want to discuss that towards the end of the video in a bit more detail. For now, I want to show you guys some of the unique features this watch has, the attention to detail present and the build quality you expect to get if you decide to purchase this watch. So that being said, it leads me perfectly on to talking about some of the distinguishing features present on this watch. First thing that is going to stand out at you, of course, is this stunning golf blue racing dial the dial itself is textured so it gives you a really nice appearance it helps absorb some of the light to give you great visibility now the dial is a multi-layer design you've actually got two discs present so you've got a dial below this blue dial which is the three black sub dials and on top you've got this blue dial placed and you also have that printed tachymeter which is a ring almost like a chapter ring placed on top to finish it all off now for the most part the dial is printed Below the 12, you'll see the logo and you'll see some text and you'll also see the model name Enduro Timer in scripted text in red. Now that nicely does match that red on the second hand as well. They go really well together. You also got a printed minute track that goes around the dial broken down into the sub seconds and you've got printing present around each of those sub dials in white again to give you that clarity and good legibility. Now let's look at the hour markers. Now this is one of those features that does stand out. You'll notice they are quite thick. Um, I haven't really seen them that thick previously on other watches and what that does it allows them to stand out and it allows you to see the level of finishing present just on the hour markers. You'll see linear brushing going across the top and where the hour markers are beveled you'll see a highly polished surface. Great for light play, gives good reflections uh, and it allows you to see those markers very clear. Now you also have a date window past the 4pm position. Now due to that multi-layer design, you do see a bit of a gap. Um, you know, the date window isn't flat against the dial. Now I'm a bit torn on this. I would have preferred this watch to not have a date window, but I know there's people out there that do prefer that. I think uh, without the date window, it would have preserved the dial symmetry a bit more. And I think it just would have made it look a bit nicer. But of course the VK63 does come with that functionality. So I understand why they'd put it in. Aside from that, the handset used on this watch does stand out really well. It's a fully polished handset, slightly chamfered. You've got this black line that goes down through the center. This is where the light plays off all these polished surfaces and brush surfaces in a really nice way. And as I said, that textured blue dial absorbs most of it and the light just glistens off these features. Uh, and you know, under light, that's where the beauty really comes out on this dial. Now, there is no loom applied. Um, and you know what? It would have been a nice touch if there was. 
uh, especially going back to considering that price point. But having said that, there is Loom present on the handset, so let's take a look at that. So the Loom they've gone for is BGW9. It's a nice cool blue, and they have got decent amount of layers placed. This has not had no UV exposure, uh, just from the lights that I have in this room. And you can see that PIP is illuminated on that second hand, which is the tachymeter second hand. Um, and yeah, present on the hour hand and the minute hand and great lens. Of course, there's no dots around the hour markers to show you what time it actually is. Uh, so yeah, it's probably a bit impractical, uh, but you know, this is how it is and it is present. Now the crystal used on the watch is a chamfered, slightly raised, slightly air coated crystal. And I think that is quite a thoughtful move. Um, you know, we do see a lot of brands out there, they overpower the watch with just loads of air coating. It was great in the beginning when we first were getting used to these blue sapphire crystals, but now as time's gone on, I think a lot of people just prefer just a slight bit of air coating. And you can just see that in the chamfers, you can see that blue popping uh, actually goes really nicely with the aesthetic, but it doesn't really get in the way. The watch also has a bezel, uh, and the bezel surprisingly has two different levels of finishing. That ring that you see along the top is brushed, and around the side of the bezel, it is fully polished. That's a nice touch. You don't usually see that, that the bezel's been flattened out, brushed linearly, and then that polishing. All is going back to pointing out these little features that do help it stand out on the rest. Now, turning the watch on its side, looking at the pushers, I really like that crown. It is a very unique crown, just under seven millimeters, so it gives you great grip. And just look at that design. You've got the Forzo logo across there against a bead blasted background but just look at that design that detail looks almost like a cog or like a turbine uh, and it really does fit well with the overall aesthetic screws in really smoothly but that is a very practical crown pushers are box standard normal kind of pushers fully polished no brushing present and i've got the second hand running so let's just pause that by pressing the a button and you can press the b pusher to reset it all and it will snap back a standout feature of the Mecha Quartz Seiko VK63. Now we've got to look further into the case to again to see those features that make this watch really pop and we look at the brushing first and foremost and look how smooth and even that brushing is even across the female endings just look how uniform that brushing is. You've got circular brushing present on the A face, satinized brushing as I call it because it is very very smooth helps give it that tool like appearance as well and that practicality and the best feature of this case and i've said it on pretty much every video where i see a case like this is that polished highlight along the side that chamfered edge which really makes that case stand out and for me that does it you could have more or less any watch if they put this thing in there i am sold uh such a great little feature just adds a bit more of a dimension different level of finishing look at the side profile of the case another thing that i do really like very slim profile brushed very finely indeed you've got drilled end lugs which of course help with strap changes and you know a watch like this most people would prefer it on a bracelet but it's an absolute strap monster especially the color that you see here with a rally type leather strap waffle strap rubber strap silicon whatever you choose i think this watch can suit a whole host of different strap options which does really add to its versatility even the case back let's open up the clasp let's have a look there it is pretty substantial you've got some great detailing present you've got that massive forzo logo stamped across the back race spec race bread i think it matches the design perfectly well now look at these cutouts on the back it reminds you of those old school rally uh, rims um, I'd say you see them on the Mitsubishi Evos etc so that's a really nice touch you've got brushing present along the back a few different levels of finishing so I see what they've done here and I have to say I do like what I see um, everything just goes so well together I think nearly every feature of the watch does have some design input it has been thought about there is some attention to detail present just bringing you back to that bezel. I mean, who would think to even brush the top of the bezel and polish the outsides? Missed a couple of tricks. I would have taken the date window out and I would have gone with that design. I also would have put loomed dots uh, at the hour markers to make sure the hands then made sense. Okay, moving on to the bracelet. This is where it gets quite vintage. Um, you know, of course, this does bear a very slight resemblance to the speed timer, for example. And I think the bracelet... Uh, gives a really nice nod and really nice and subtle nod to that era and it does look slightly vintage so of course you'll see the female end links which is a bonus to have and then you've got the brushed outer links and the highly polished center links we have seen this on old school bracelets links themselves 
look really well made. They taper down from 20 millimeters all the way down to 16 and it goes up to just around 18 at the clasp. They are solid end links, screwing links as well and the brushing is present all the way through even on the back. So really good solid links. The fit is spot on. You know, it does not feel like a cheap watch at all. Everything uh, is built well and it fits really nicely. The polishing, of course, it will be a fingerprint magnet, but I think it is essential to have this polished uh, because it does make that watch shine. It does match the bezel. And, you know, even though we would prefer a brushed center link, uh, I think looks wise, this does look great. And it totally matches. And I know why they've done it. And it makes sense to make the center links polished especially with this design moving on to the clasp this is where we do really see that nod to that vintage era of course they could have gone with a different type of clasp and i think this has been done on purpose you've got six micro adjustments present you've got a folded clasp uh, and again it's just a press clasp no pushers do see this on different watches um, which are trying to be kind of old school or vintage and this is what the type of clasp that was used and even on the clasp you will see a polished edge a beveled edge again a nice touch and you've got this super smooth finishing so i think it's a great balance because you've got an old school style of clasp uh, and bracelet but the finishing is very modern very smooth and sleek which gives it a really good appearance and i think they've done that well in this watch uh, they've combined you know the, the love of cars watches bit of vintage and they've modernized it by chamfering and polishing and adding these 3d applied hour markers and I think it works really well together. So let's get this on wrist. Let's see how this looks. And here we have the Forzo Enduro Timer on my six and a half inch wrist. Really good fit. 40 mil diameter, although with a bezel slight overhang, it's just under 41 millimeters. It looks really good on wrist. It is very comfortable. Of course, the bracelet adds a lot to that. You've got these smaller links. Uh, they are slightly shorter, giving you really good wrap around, uh, around that wrist. Uh, and the clasp fits really nice i think that six micro adjusts uh, do really help it'll allow you to get a variety of adjustments uh, and that is sitting very nicely on wrist the color really does it for me and those details that i mentioned earlier on that polished bezel the brushing on the case that polished profile there just really good looking so now let's summarize do i think this watch uh, is worth 400 pounds I think it's too expensive for £400. I think it's a lot easier to justify this at around £320 uh, when you do get a sale price. So if you really, really want this, I'd highly recommend to look at the description. Uh, I'll put in the links of the uh, distributors of Forza watches. I think it's Watch Gecko or Gecko to watches. Uh, so it's definitely worth looking at them and trying to get that sale. Now, having said that, this is where I'm going to kind of break off into a slight tangent. You've got to remember, Forza did not market this to us. What I mean by that, my channel deals with all homage brands, predominantly AliExpress. And of course, no micro brand, no brand really from the UK or anywhere or independent brand can actually compete with them. These are guys that have got access to factories. A lot of the time use recycled cases, recycled designs. You know, it's a lot cheaper to get a watch like that. And of course, uh, sell it for a lot cheaper. You know, when you get to something like this, uh, where you've got to design every element, uh, depending on the volume of uh, watches you're ordering as well, that has a massive impact. Um, you know, doing all these unique little touches, polishing these hands, you know, chamfering, putting these features in there, those features, etc. Everything that I've said, going these lengths to get that kind of bracelet. Yeah, it does really add to the cost. They, they don't really want to market this watch at like £200, for example. Um, it will not have any appeal then because this is motorsport you know 400 pound is still affordable uh you've got watches like tag etc which are in the thousands so i think if you look at it from that perspective it is priced well uh it is priced to sell um and you know they've got to have some value with it when they sell it at that price like i said if it's too cheap it really doesn't have any of that perceived value you know, but for guys that are looking at it from this channel, it's £320 is a better price, I'd say. But having said that, I am absolutely delighted to say um, I love the features that I've spoken about, the things that I've pointed out or that have stood out to me. It's done really well. The, the movement is super reliable. You guys know that. Um, the finishing is top quality. 
and the the watch in hand feels amazingly well done like i said the brushing everything's there i've been looking at watches for a long time now um we've looked at loads of homage watches and with the vk62 or 64 um i haven't seen anything that is like this where it's got all these features and design elements present um unless you guys know of one which is a very close one then please let me know but i think this definitely does stand out uh, especially with the packaging present you know it really adds up to the whole package you get that uh blue soft uh watch roll as well uh so it is a very nice package unique branding it's an independent micro brand um and they've ticked a hell of a lot of boxes uh so yeah and that's my full honest overview on the watch and i agree with you guys as well on that price aspect but that's my two pence coming in after that so i hope you guys enjoyed that review let me know your thoughts in the comments section below uh, and if you think anything different but i'd like to give a big thank you to forzo watches for uh, lending this watch uh, introducing the, themselves to me uh, and i will be sending this back uh, shortly after this review has been done so thank you guys for watching and i will see you on another video